welcome back to Studio Lou. It's Cindy. Welcome back to my kind of messy desk. I am continuing to work today on um, the Shoulder the Sky journal and I'm just going to kind of make ephemera as I go through this journal a little bit. Um, and I also have a thrift haul from yesterday, I think. Yeah, yesterday. When I dropped off donations at our local thrift store. It will probably be the last um, thrift haul for a little while because we are going into lockdown in my region again. So a lot of non-essential shopping won't be happening. Um, not that I do a whole lot to begin with, but it is what it is. Is that going to be too wide or will that fit on? It will fit on a page. Good. I like that but not for this so I'm just um, working on a little collage and picking out a few things for this this journal from my stash of um, cutouts and such what I want to do with this big picture I kept it for some reason but it's like this big spoonbill bird. It's beautiful, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, that's nice. Okay, so we need something to go on the front of that flap. through here to see if there's anything sky or winter related. For this journal. Doo, 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 doo. Lots of fish. And lots of botanicals. That's cool. I know this is taking forever here. I was trying to find out what would be nice. Maybe this actually. Yeah, that would be nice. I'm just going to ink it up a little bit with hmm, brown. So today's my son's first birthday. He is now taking a nap after a very exciting afternoon. We had a nice lunch and he had cake and presents. November is both my kids' birthdays, like a week apart. So it's like, oh, cake, so much cake. But my daughter is like a chocolate fiend right now. So she got the chocolate cake. But my son is really like, he loves fruit. So I made him um, like a cherry cake with um, almost done like a, like a strawberry shortcake with some not very sweet cream and fresh strawberries and raspberries and it was really good actually it was light it wasn't so heavy because after having like a chocolate cake the other day i was not really feeling a whole lot of cake today and i guess that's going to be my life now it is not being like totally burned out from one birthday in order to make sure that we are able to celebrate two birthdays and not be unfair to the second one in line <laughs> so november i'm just going to be like on a sugar high the whole time um but yeah it was a really nice little just a little get together and we did some um skype messaging with my parents so that they could see him open his presents and he was pretty happy and that's all you can ever want so there we go that's just a nice little flip up for some more writing space so 
I will do that. Then move along here. See what I want to do. Maybe a pocket or something here would be good. Or even I could uh, just glue down some kind of an interesting. This is really cool and I wanted to use it. It's Leonardo and the Dream of Flight. So I definitely would like to use that somewhere in here. Maybe it's a pocket, but I don't want it to extend outside of the book. So I might, yeah, I might need to figure out something different here. Like potentially, this could be folded. If it was covered in paper on the back, that could be folded maybe. Um, let's think. Right, I could do like a pocket with this piece and then glue down that. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, let's think about this here. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. So, this page, we're going to cut here just like this. And then just slightly round these edges. Okay. And then trim. So now, what I'm going to do is, this will be the pocket, and actually, I'm going to trim a little more here, so that I can cut off the first two words. This will all come together, you'll see. Okay, so next thing I need is a backing paper. Move the journal out of the way here. And, um... So this will be a pocket so it doesn't matter what I back it with. So I'm just going to use a book page. I think... Well, this, is, this is not big enough, no. Unless I were to use two, which I could do. Uh, but I also have that, this here. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. Cause it's already been, um, it's already been cut from. And it's a little bit thicker like a cardstock, so it'll give the pocket more strength. move back a little bit there we go that's better I don't want to be out of frame <laughs> so it's a really snowy day here it's our first I would say like actual snow staying on the ground kind of day so I don't know how I feel about it I'm not like in the holiday mood yet. I'm I'm starting to get there because I have a few friends who are starting to decorate for the holidays and I have already purchased a couple of um, gifts and I'm thinking about just starting on my handmade items. Um, I think I just want to keep Christmas like or like the holidays. I want to keep them a little bit low key in terms of like well, definitely in terms of shopping. I don't want to do a lot of shopping. I'm not doing any like in-person shopping at stores really. Um, not with the way things are going with the pandemic. I, I just don't want to be in stores. So 
there's that. Um, but then the other thing is just, I'm hoping to like not spend a ton of money either because like, I don't know, things are pretty, they're okay for me right now. But like, I feel like everything is kind of uncertain right now. And so I don't want to be, um, I don't know. I don't want to take any risks, I guess. So that's how things are. Also, like, I feel kind of like, I don't know, my, my kids are small and they don't need a whole ton because they have a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm starting, we're starting to kind of prepare to move. So at the same time, I'm like not wanting to accumulate a ton of things either. So... I think when I glue this down, I'm going to glue it like this. I'm not going to glue the whole thing. Just make it like a sort of a side tuck rather than like a tight defined pocket. Okay. I find this bottle, I don't know what it is, but when you first get like the glue going, it's just, I don't know if it's because it's so full. It's just too much. Here we go. There we go. But yeah, I, I'm not going to be doing a lot of in-person shopping at all. And then I'm not going to be shopping at like big box retailers. I'm going to try to stay small if I can. And uh, just buy a few like meaningful things like and not get too much because um, I just want to really prepare to pack all our stuff and move to a different house and change our life that way really. That's the dream. So I, I also was thinking like I was remembering before everything changed in March that I was thinking more about like how money gets spent and that I wanted to not buy so many like things in terms of just like household stuff and whatnot um, because I want to like spend money on experiences as well as like art and like you know handmade things which I already pretty much do, but I wanted to just make sure like I wasn't, you know, wasting much money on things like that I don't need like more dishes and stuff like that. Or like home decor, like I don't buy any holiday decor really. I make things, but I, I don't really buy like definitely not manufactured decorations because I feel sort of like they're just like, I don't know. Everything like makes me feel weird about the landfill. Anything that you're not going to keep and also just stuff that's like has a really big footprint of manufacturing. I guess that's why I like doing this kind of stuff because it's like it's reuse. It's um, reclaiming things that might end up in the landfill. If that makes sense. There's just so much to think about these days in terms of like the way we do things. So it's nice to try to be as ethical as we can. So I think I just want some little kind of thing that's a little bit different to stick in there. And I'm trying to decide if I have something like that, like this little bit of text that I cut out because I like it. I just have to see what it's all about here. The moon is 50 times smaller than the earth around which makes, which it revolves in about 27 days and eight hours. It always shows the same side because while it revolves around the earth, it also rotates once on its axis during the same time. It's like a person turning around and obviously facing it. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's like a little factoid. And then if I backed it, would it go in here though? Hmm. Huh. Because this page is a little smaller than the others, it might, it might want to stick out a bit. But how much? Because if it's just like around the level of, yeah, that's actually fine. So I'm going to do exactly that. So I need paper to back it with. Um, and I want something a little thicker, I think. Do, do, do. Yeah. 
I'm actually reusing um, like an old, like a tag that I made that I don't really like. I had these like printouts that didn't uh, turn out properly because my printer settings weren't correct. And I thought maybe I could reuse, like I could cover them or something, but I think I won't use them because the um, pixelation is too much. So I'm just going to reuse the paper this way. And then I think I'll round the corners. sort of tuck in there and it won't interfere too much with like this Leonardo information so I just took that one snippet and I glued half of it here and then the other side I made a pocket and then I just glued part of the title there so here we go and we need a little something to cover up this page um, cover up this verse I think yeah it's a little sticky I don't want to use anything sticky because this paper is very fine and I don't want it to stick so I'm looking forward maybe to taking my daughter out tobogganing she got a toboggan for her birthday and so that might be something fun to do there's actually enough snow to do that. There we go. So we'll cover that over. And then I have this little bit of text. When Galileo for the first time pointed his telescope towards the sky, he showed men the ways of infinite space. And I thought maybe I will just put that there. I will highlight it a little bit in yellow and uh, I like it squared off as it is, so I'm not going to round it or anything or trim it. Okay. weekend actually just feels like it's going quickly. I think it's because I know I have a long week ahead of me. My work is very busy these days. I feel like it's this rush up to the holiday season. Uh, the industry I work in sort of, um, it's part of like the whole lock chain of 
how people, I, I'd say buy things, um, basically. So it's like the holidays, a lot of corporate companies will kind of close down and people try to get all these things accomplished before it's time to take a break. And it makes it real crunch time for everyone, so. And I totally am not like feeling it anymore. I think like working at home, I think I've said this before on video is that like, I'm thankful that I get to do so. But for those of you who aren't working this work at home um, schedule, you might not be aware, but it's actually pretty tough. It's like, I, I've always worked at home a couple of days a week and I, I like, it's, it's a much easier thing for me to work at home, but the working at home isn't the problem. It's the way that some people have adjusted their expectations that others are working at home. Like they sort of expect that you're available, you know, at seven o'clock in the morning until like nine o'clock at night. And they feel nothing about booking during the lunch period because, you know, maybe they feel like that's the only way to get into your calendar or something. Um, and so, and they figure you're at home anyways, you can just shift your lunch around. But, you know, when you have a family and you have other people in your home that you have to consider, it makes it a lot harder to be flexible to those challenges that you would not have if you were in the workplace and everyone is taking that 12 or one o'clock lunch hour and, you know, hanging out in like a lunch room or going for a walk. Um, you know, they don't expect to find you at your desk during those hours. And they definitely don't expect to find you when you aren't sitting at your desk or your car is not at work. So that has been a thing. I also find like a lot of people are unnecessarily scheduling meetings, like, that really could just be an email and I think that's because they either are the kind of person who has never worked at home or they seriously have trust issues and they don't understand that you know I think honestly I've, I've been in management for a very long time and also just been a colleague of other corporate workers um, and other adults um, <laughs> and I think sometimes people forget that um, you know, if you don't do your job, like the only one truly who's going to suffer in most cases is you because we all feed some kind of, you know, sorry about that. We all feed some kind of downstream thing and that thing, you know, it will suffer if we don't get the work done. So I think most people know that, like, even if you're not worried that your boss will be upset with you you know that you're going to have a customer who's going to complain or you're going to have a a job that doesn't get finished and then you're going to have to do it much quicker you know it's just there's not really some magic like ability to just like stay in bed and not do anything it just doesn't work that way and i think that the corporate world could really benefit from having more trust in its employees because i have seen all manner of like reaction to this working at home thing um, and a lot of it has to do with just this concept of perception something that gets talked about very often in my job and always makes me kind of roll my eyes because you know I believe in the good of people and I think unless they show you otherwise you give people the benefit of the doubt like if they say they need to work at home then let them like it's you know they might have something going on but also I think when you think about all the things we do unnecessarily to just hold up this weird status quo of like um like the world being a certain way imagine not having to go into an office like what that would do it would save you time like in commuting it would save like hours of your day some people, are, at least where I live, this general city area, like people drive from one city to the other because most people don't live in the city they work in. Um, or if they do, it still takes a very long time to get across the city. And so that being said, um, you know, you save all that time. You save wear and tear on a car. It's good for the environment. You're not out driving all the time. Um, 
you know, you have more hours to your day. So if you do have something that you'd like to do, you can get it done in the morning. Um, you know, your ability to have more time for yourself and just like be healthier, like being able to take a walk in the morning instead of having to like jump out of bed, shower, you know, get dressed and drive. Like there's just so many benefits to a world where common sense rules instead of like optics but I don't know I don't know if like this will change like I'm kind of glad that we have had this like forced experiment in the working at home situation because I think it's kind of good for people though I do think some people might be ruining it for all of us by not doing it right or like you know annoying other people by like disrespecting work hours Oh, yeah, I keep tearing that crooked. I think I torn it too crooked to be able to use it. Yeah, I have. Those become scraps. Well, those become recycling, and this becomes a scrap. Um, yeah, so that's my blurb about working from home. I just hope we get a world where, like, we can still do jobs but not have to do them sitting in like little corporate bubbles <laughs> also all the unnecessary real estate all the unnecessary land use I mean I know that one like one market affects another but I think at the same time like we could really benefit as humans by just being more conscientious to like when something has a high impact, regardless of how the economy benefits, like, you know, that whole, like, um, what is the, what is that song like? Um, like the don't, you don't know what you've got till it's gone, like the parking lot. Um, what is the, I forget, like, Basically, it's like you burn down a forest for a parking lot kind of thing. Um, I'm not, it's Joni Mitchell. Like, I know all of the details, but I just can't remember the lyrics. Um, okay. Tear down the trees, put them in a tree museum. See, I can remember all the words except for, like, the the um, actual, like, vert, chorus. So that's okay. The point I'm getting at is like just because something benefits the economy doesn't mean it doesn't have a cost to like your life and the environment and your family and you know all those things so yeah we can all work at home I know we can Okay. I also think it would be nice if, like, you know, imagine being able to go on, like, vacations whenever you want, but, like, you could even have a working vacation. Like, say you wanted to go to, you know, a resort, and, like, you've got kids, and your kids could go and do, you know, fun things, and, like, they can have experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have because you're working, but, like, you know, from nine to five, you're not going to be with them, you've got to work, but, like, you're still in a different place, you're able to change it up, and that's, like, really, I think, nice, just to be able to have the freedom to do that. Okay, so this is like um, images of like some dragons, like this whole page is just not what I want in this journal, but I use it for whatever's on the other side. So I'm going to actually just get something big that I can fully cover it with. And then I think after that I will show you my thrift haul. So that's probably too big. I don't want to waste this whole big page really on this. I mean, half of it, no, not half of it. Let's see what else I have. That could be cool. But what would it look like on this side now? No. Well, I think that's where I'm going to stop for today. So that I don't take you on like a 
10 minutes of me pondering what to do with this page. I will figure that out and we will come back to it. I am in the center now of the third signature of five. So we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. I could actually even pop something back here maybe. <laughs> that one's a little wide. Is that pocket? How tight is it? Not that tight actually. Let's see. I just need something a little taller maybe too. Oh, this is like that booklet thing, I think. That might even work over here. But I wouldn't want to glue it down. I'd want to do something like this with that, maybe. It's like a page cover. Um, let's find a good page to put that on. Something thick and plain like this, maybe. There we go. Yeah, that would be good on there. And then if I have, let me see if I have any more altered paper clips. I might actually just do a video and sit and make altered paper clips because I really need to make some. I don't even think I have any. Uh, does not seem that I do. Yeah, so I think I'll make a video on just making altered paper clips because I really need to make some. So that's where I will close up this journal and be done with that for now. Um, move this book out of the way. So let's just kind of clear the deck here a little bit. Gonna make some room so I can show you this stuff that I got. Also throw away this staple that's hanging around by itself. Okay. So let me go through what I got here. So first thing I got is um just this bag of lace. It was 50 cents. And um, it's just a nice bit of like thicker lace pieces, a few different kinds of pieces, just random pieces of lace. Then this book called Canadian Wildflowers and Emblems. And I really like the paper inside of it. It was from the Mississauga Library System, but I guess they got rid of it. But it's, like, really nice. And I think it would be uh, nice in um, nature journals. Yeah. Then, this book, I liked some of the illustrations. It's called The Lovables in the Kingdom of Self-Esteem. Um, this is so cute. To Laura, our lovable lamb, hugs and kisses, Nanny Wilson, 7392. So I'll probably read this book with my daughter first and then I'll use it. Um, yeah, so it's just about being like courageous, lovable, like all these great traits. But like the pictures, some of them are just really nice. Like the illustrations are gorgeous. I think I'll take that upstairs with me today and maybe read it to my daughter when she wakes up. And then I'll probably use it for something journal related unless she becomes like super attached to it. And then the other thing I found is this. I have to run it through the washing machine still, but um, I always like to find other people's like work. So this is like a little, yeah, it's like a little quilt blanket kind of thing. But Basically, it's been um, really interestingly embroidered. It's all different fabrics and all around the edge is just like different fabrics and this interesting stitch. It's like it's embroidery floss, but it looks like it's been like long. It's in long stitches and it's twisted. And like I love some of these fabrics like they're just really neat. And on each corner, it has this like tulip. So, I mean, that's just really nice. And I love finding other people's 
work and they, these things are like they're great as like little tablecloths um, for my art shows or like I mean these could become journal covers um, they could also become a table cover for when I am doing journal flip throughs like I usually try to provide some kind of a nice flat surface to show you like just the journal instead of my messy work surface so I haven't actually set up a space to, to do that yet down here I usually do all my filming in my library but my library has been converted back into what it originally was which was a library slash guest room so because my family are visiting right now that's what it's doing with itself right now um, Then I found, there was a whole box of this, but I just grabbed a fat stack of it. So it is hole punched tables, like just table paper. And so that will be really cool in journals. I might even dye some of it with cabbage. I thought like cabbage specifically to make it blue would be really neat. I mean, it's really nice because it's like you could write on that as lined paper, right? Um... Let me just set that there. And then I also got this game called Note O, the game of music symbols for the schoolroom or home by Mrs. F.L. Crown, Chicago, Illinois. I love the box. I thought the box was cool. Um, I'm probably going to either I, mean, I might punch holes in these to use them as like, um, you know how like on a tag You'll use this little thing to strengthen the hole. I think I will do that with them. <laughs> but what I bought this for is these, because I thought these would make really cool tags and journal cards. And they're like all music related. So that was a cool find. Just this vintage game. Um, but I need to deal with that and put it in something so it doesn't spill everywhere. And then I found this book called The Magic of Reading Series Into Wonderland. And I love the cover with swans. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing it, but yesterday I actually pulled it out. I've got this sort of swan themed story. Um, it's like a big accordion fold and it's got swans in it. So I thought I could use that with this to make a really cool journal that like has some swans in it. And um, it does have some illustrations. Most of them aren't really things that I would use. Some are, like I would use these for sure. <laughs> some are really funny. It's also got very big words, which I like to, um, I like to use to grab snippets out of, as you probably saw me gluing some snippets into this journal I'm working on now. And then I found one of the cool uh, Reader's Digest books that have the cool covers. And like they've got the um, the spines that have like these little little bumps in them. So yeah, I don't know the... I never... Oh, excuse me. I am yawning. I'm tired. I was awake a lot last night. My son woke up so many times. <laughs> He's just going through a tooth thing. But yeah, I've never read these books. I, I don't really read them. But the lady who was running the thrift store loves them. And she was kind of sad to give this one up, I think. But that's okay. Shove this in here. And then... I went a little bit... Well, I didn't go crazy. I spent... <laughs> all this stuff was like $10, seriously. So I spent a little bit of money yesterday because I'm aware that we're going to be going into lockdown and all these stores aren't going to be open. So I paid a dollar for these scissors <laughs> and they're like the funniest thing. So first of all, they look like a bird. Um, I've never seen them. I don't know what brand they are. It says stainless steel china on them. They're very sharp though. And um, the way you open them is with the tail. And like, I think they will be decent. I haven't tried cutting anything with them. I don't know how fine they will cut. Let me get one of these, these ugly tags that I don't care about. Let's see how this goes. 
I mean, they're pretty comfortable to hold, but I think they're not really good for fine cutting, but they'd be good for normal cutting. Um, cause it's weird not to have like, I'm, I'm so used to having like my thumb held down by the scissor loop. So let me see if I can cut this out, this little triangle. It just, yeah, it seems like it kind of can jump forward too easily. So it would make fine cutting a little hard, but I mean, I did it. I did it. So, <laughs> so yeah, these are my weird bird scissors that you'll probably be seeing now. And then I found this little, um, sewing kit and I often buy these for different reasons. This, I need some of these metal bobbins. I also like this little screwdriver for, um, this is usually for like sewing machine maintenance. If you need to take off your, um, something that like your pedal or something that holds your needle or your, um, threader. And there are some needle threaders in here and thimble, but yeah, I just got this cause there's a few handy things in it. Then I got um, some rickrack and other random like ribbons and elastics and some laces and um, trims. And this one again, these tiny screwdrivers, but also this has needles in it, including some Schmetz um, ballpoint needles. So I can use those on one of my machines. These ones, I'm not even sure what kind they are, but they're neat. So that's that stuff. Then I have, um, I have another series of journals that I'm going to be doing really soon. And they're going to be about childhood nostalgia, um, specifically like the eighties and cartoons and toys that we were into. So I specifically really enjoy like ones that were targeted at the time at girls, but really anybody could watch them then or now, doesn't matter. Um, but at the time it was things like Popples, Wuzzles, Rainbow Bright, Lady Lovely Locks, things like that. Um, and then like, if you watch my Specularia channel, you'll see that I'm into, um, vintage toys that are a little bit more rare, things like brush loves Um, I'm trying to think of like some other toys that, are, are a little more rare that you don't see all the time. Um, but I can't think, um, today I can't think. So I've been collecting materials from vintage toys and, um, the books, the like just different ephemera type stuff around vintage toys. So this is a rainbow bright puzzle and I have no idea if it's complete, but I'm going to find out because I'm going to put these puzzles together and if they are complete, what I'm going to do, so I'm definitely going to be using this box image that's going to become a journal cover. Um, then the puzzle itself is going to become a journal cover. I'm going to put it together, Mod Podge the whole thing. I'm going to back it with a hard card stock and I'm going to make it into a journal. So that's my plan for this rainbow bright puzzle this My Little Pony game is a 3D stand-up game. So I'll be using the box for sure. And then I've got to figure out what I can do with this. I think I'll open it up. I think there are like cards in here. Um, thankfully these people don't use crazy tape. They just use, oh yeah, totally. Journal cards. Hello, journal cards. So yeah, this will be perfect for the My Little Pony journal. So no promises on when this is going to happen, but it's going to happen and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, like these are amazing. These will make amazing journal covers. I am so stoked. I like can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. So that's going to happen. This one's got me so excited. I've got to try to carefully get this off though. Um, it's Lady Lovely Locks. So let's see, actually this is gonna come off really easy. These were brand new. She had, the woman who was stocking them had just put them on a cart and I scored them very quickly. So let me just take all these off right now. Um, 
So I'm hoping that they're complete. But you know, even if they're not, what I could do, like say if this was the front of the puzzle, if this whole thing was a puzzle and I was missing like say this piece, I could like maybe just paint something there or you know put sparkles there or something like as long as it's not the whole face of something like I have ideas I have like a lot of ideas about this so I think that's what I'm going to work on probably next after shoulder the sky and then this one was more um on a whim because my husband here let me bring this down my husband was like well why don't you take that one too because like why leave one behind right and you know like I said, I was more into like the stuff that was targeted at girls at the time, um, gender wise, but like I did like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I thought the cartoon was fun. I enjoyed the video game. I don't know why, because I don't think anyone else did. I liked the movies and I love the idea. And even now I, I do this with my own daughter. Like we have like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie watching pizza night and it's like so fun it's just fun nostalgia like you you have to enjoy childhood for your whole life because like it's the most exciting and wonderful part of life and don't give up on it because growing up it's not all it's cracked up to be like I mean there's fun phases you get to have your own kids if you want to you get to have a really cool job you get to travel you get to do all the things adults get to do but I mean pizza party sleepovers, playing games, you know, having cool toys. I don't think I've ever gotten tired of that. So I say do it. It's fun. So that's my thrift haul, I think. I don't think I have anything else. Let me double check. I wouldn't want to like, no, I don't. Okay. I wouldn't want to leave anything and not show you. So yeah, that's that. And if you're here from my Specularia channel, you know what? I'm sorry. I have not made a video for the Specularia channel in a little while because I'm so consumed with just creative stuff right now that I haven't. Also, I haven't been thrifting, so I haven't really been able to like bring home thrift hauls. I have a few things and I've shown them in videos on this channel, but I promise you when like I get things sorted out I will make more videos for that channel I have a ton of like cool stuff that I just want to do videos where I tell you about this cool stuff that I have in my house um but like right now I'm packing everything because we're trying to do a lot of home renovation because we want to move we have major plans for a really cool property to do some really interesting stuff so the time will come and I will be here assuming nothing torrential happens in life and I will just keep making that's what I do so Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I did all of this stuff and I hope you have a really good rest of your weekend. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you find value here, I would love it if you would subscribe. That helps me get my videos out and once I get to a certain number of subscribers, um, I will be able to do some giveaways and stuff and we'll have like um, fun doing that kind of thing. And so yeah, all my information on my shop and other social media that I have Instagram Facebook etc it's all in the description box so thank you again and have a great day I will probably talk to you tomorrow